Hey guys, it's Monday, 2.24 a.m. and I have been up tonight researching and I want to bring my results of some of my findings to you because I think they're very significant. And as you may or may not know from my last video on electromagnetic conductivity and the conductors that are actually affixed to these guardrails and this guardrail burning phenomenon that's happening across the state of California with these fires, um, I've been very intrigued as to why it's the chunk of wood that is the least exposed to oxygen that is actually burning the most completely in these supposed outdoor, you know, nothing more than wildfires, fires. For some reason, it's the chunk of wood that has got the least exposure to oxygen. They're sandwiched between a piece of metal and the post to which they're fixed to the ground. And that, that piece that is tucked behind the metal is the one that's burning more thoroughly than even the twigs are the size of my pinky. Now, there's been a lot of comments in my comments section to say, oh, but in truth by grace, those twigs that are the size of your pinky have, they're fresh, they're, they've got water in them. You know, but those people have obviously never had a bonfire and roasted uh, marshmallows with a fresh twig before because your fresh twig that you just ripped off a tree is going to burn j far more quickly than any of the logs you have in your fire. And that's pretty much my point is that, you know, the twigs, if, if you're going to, if you've got enough time to burn an entire log, you've got more than enough time to burn a twig. And yet the twigs are still there. The branches on the trees are still there, but this big, huge, thick, and when I say thick, some of the people who've been responding in my comment section are telling me that some of these pieces of wood are eight inches thick. Okay. You guys, that is that's really thick. That's, that's tree trunk thick. So these pieces should not be burning that quickly. And as I point out, it's only the electromagnetic conductors that are actually distinguishing those materials from the others. So as I watch this video by Mental Boost here, you see that it is in fact that piece of wood that is burning right at the point where the, where the, uh, nails or the bolter are in there and he goes through this video and he actually shows how this sign here as compared to, to Google Earth he demonstrates that three of the four bolts on this particular sign have failed now if you look at how this fire is burning around it there's no fire anywhere there's not even fire on the ground here well maybe a little bit up here but but really it's just this the signpost that's that that's loosed itself of the sign by virtue of a failure of the bolts. So that, that really got me convinced that there has to be something that's electromagnetic. There, there's an electromagnetic quality to this. So what I did tonight was I did a bunch of research on the electromagnetic exposure of wood. What happens when you microwave wood? Okay, and this, this particular research journal really does a great job of summing it up for me. Now pyrolysis is something that I have to define for you guys if you don't know what it means. It's a decomposition of something that's brought about by high temperatures. In other words, it's a, it's a change of the physical nature of whatever is being heated at, at high temperature. So pyrolysis is this, this decomposition or this change of the physical nature. We'll get a load of what happens when you force this change on wood. If you inundate wood with microwave heating, pyrolysis produces something called level glucosan. Well, what's level glucosan? You guys, level glucosan is something, it's a component that happens when you really heat uh, cellulose fibers, and it is a very volatile, extremely flammable material. So in other words, you can accelerate cellulose combustion or the burning of wood by exposing it to microwave energy. And if you have a nail going through that cellulose fiber, you guys, you're going to catch that thing on fire so quick. <laughs> You're going to catch it on fire quick and by virtue of the fact that the, if you expose the entire composition to microwaves, you're going to get more of this glucosan, glu yeah, glucosan and you're going to get a huge, a huge fire. Think about how many cellulose fibers you guys have around your house that are affixed by, some, by, by electromagnetic conductors. Think about it. You've got carpet that's tacked down. Okay, you have wood that's nailed against you know other pieces of wood you have trusses with nails through it you have paneling with with nails through it you have nails in your couch you know assembling your furniture you have all sorts of electromagnetic conductors by nails and bolts and screws and stuff like that 
through all sorts of cellulose fibers in your house, whether it's the, your curtains or it's your carpeting or it's your bedding or it's your bed springs in your mattress. You start exposing that to high levels of microwave radiation and you're going to get rapid pyrolysis, pyrolysis which is going to produce this level of glucosan in your cellulose fibers, which is just going to make your house super flammable and probably ignite at that point where the electromagnetic conductor is actually centered through that cellulose fiber, which would totally, totally account for what the heck we're seeing here, you guys. What's going on here? So this is the same exact sign, and you can see that there are two signs. There's a rectangle on bottom, a diamond-shaped sign on top. If you look really close, you can see that the diamond-shaped sign has bolts that go all the way through the wood, so there should be a nut and a washer on that. I can't see anything on the bottom, but it's a very low-resolution picture. But from the front, you can see what sign it is. The 25-mile-per-hour bottom part has become detached from the post. But the top part... Now look what's on fire. It's right at the part. Now what it shows here is that the sign, well, I'll let it, I'll let it keep playing. Or is upside down. If you look close, you can see that the wood part extends above the diamond shape. So in the Google Maps image, you can see that the wood stops below the top of the sign. So that means that top bolt has failed or disappeared, and the sign has swung around and is now flipped upside down. And uh, that means that three out of four of those signpost bolts have disappeared. And is that what's going on with the guardrails? With them coming down, they don't look right in the guardrails. The nuts just slip off, or the bolts just are missing altogether. Very strange. But this could indicate where the fire is starting and doing its business, how it's starting. I mean, it's still a mystery. It's the, I mean, this is not a video that's answering any questions. It's just pointing at a detail that really indicates that there's something going on with bolts and the wood, the fire starting at that location. Okay, so let's go back here and just take a look at this. And you guys are going to see of all the areas that are on fire, it is these bolt, where the bolted posts are. And it's the piece of wood that is least exposed to oxygen that is consistently burning throughout this. Now, with what I just showed you about how microwaves will accelerate this level glucosan, you know, from pyrolysis, you're going to end up with something that is extra flammable in the particular area where the, let me get it back here, yeah, where the flames are actually, we're actually observing this. This is actually happening. 100% contrary to what happens in a normal open air fire. Okay, a forest fire does not burn the most, you know, insulated piece of wood first. It burns the, the readily available kindling, not the chunks that are, are hidden from oxygen like this. So I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that the electromagnetic conductors of these railings is really pointing to the fact that Yes, this is, there is something here that is accelerating the production of some volatile substance. In this instance, we're demonstrating that it's level glucosan. And level glucosan, you guys, is extremely flammable, which would account for why houses are just going up in flames. And everything that has metal in it is, is just transforming cellulose, at least in this instance, I can demonstrate a cellulose fibers. I'm gonna keep researching to see what happens with plastics and so forth, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that if you have electromagnetic conductors going through plastics, you're also gonna get this kind of pyrolysis that will make it much more susceptible to ignition and, uh, and combustion. So this is, we're, we're getting closer. This is not something to be ignored at all. Microwave energy, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure is really, really involved in this whole mess out in California.